Okay, well, first thing I did was I saw Paranormal Activity 2. And if you are aware of my first review, I really, really liked the first one. Uh, for those of you guys who are keeping score and say I don't like anything, mark that one on the good column. Really like Paranormal Activity. And so, as a result, I have no idea how much I'm going to repeat myself with the previous one. And I'm going to avoid spoilers up to a point, and then I'm going to tell you the spoilers. I'm going to warn you, and then we're going to do it. So, I really liked Paranormal Activity 2. Not as much as the first one, <clears throat> but um, I still thought it was one of the more effective horror movies of the year. And it's... Uh, the series really is representative of the very best of the quote-unquote found footage uh, type of movie. You know, the, the, of course, everyone brings up Blair Witch, but the, the, I just saw the Poughkeepsie tapes not long ago. Uh, but that kind of movie. Um, the very worst. There's a lot of bad found footage tapes nowadays. Uh, may, I'm thinking of Quarantine, mainly. A really bad example of that, of, of that kind of movie. But um, how do I recommend this movie? Um, I, once again, objectively, here's how I would put it. If this looks like a good movie to you, you'll like it. Really, that's it. I mean... You know exactly what you're getting into, especially if you saw the first one. This doesn't pull a Blair Witch 2, where it becomes more of a standard movie instead of a found footage movie. It really is, it's more of the same, and it's almost, it really is same shit, different day. You know, same shit, different house. But, um, how does it compare to the first one? Well... I'm, again, I'm trying to avoid spoilers here, so how do I describe it? Okay, in terms of effectiveness, in terms of, uh, like, once again, if, if you don't find this shit scary, like, if you don't find the sound of creaking and you don't find the notion of doors blowing shut or things you can't see happening in the dark you can't see to people you can't really see, I'm not going to convince you that it's good. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to say, if, if you don't find them scary, you don't find it scary. You know, for the same reason that I never really found Jason Voorhees all that scary. You know, I, I never really had a fear of a hockey-masked, machete-wielding maniac kicking in my door. I just never really struck me. I never really had a fear of sexually androgynous girls at sleepaway camp stabbing me, pardon me, or running me over with a motorboat. You know, just... Might, I'm sure it shocks some people, but you know, in terms of legitimate fears, okay. But uh, you know, fear of the dark, fear of fear of strange noises in the house, and the ability to suspend the disbelief, suspend your disbelief. Um, if you're able to do that, this is going to be a really awesome ride, and pretty much everyone in the theater was, you know, that type of people who are willing to, who are like legitimately gasping in, in shock, and it's not always. I hesitate to call the scares cheap because it is a lot of really sudden movements and, and violent actions occurring to people out of nowhere, you know, doors, like, like I said, doors blowing open, but really I do think that this movie earns those scares more than many others because it creates a dreadful atmosphere, an atmosphere of bad things are going to happen, and there's no escape from this, and you, it, you're going to get fucked by this thing and there's nothing you can do about it it's legitimate stuff that if it were to happen in your house and this is the sort of stuff like you know especially the build-up to this where you hear footsteps or you hear creaking creaking you know floorboards or sounds that could easily be the house settling and yet they go on too long or they're yet they're a little bit too loud doors that are slightly more open than when you left them uh rattling pots that sort of thing actually the pots they really sp they, they really overspend their nickel on the, the the pots but i'll get to that um and i'm not saying this sort of shit happens what i'm saying is when you're alone in the house and it's really late at night and you hear this shit it would fucking freak you out especially when the shit starts happening in this movie and so i guess what i'm okay i guess what i'm saying to explain what i'm saying is that um when you have this sort of movie the type of 
found footage movie and they're really trying to push it as legitimate you know like this is this is crazy shit we found and this really happened you buy it i buy it uh for for a great deal of it and it only works so long as they they put on a show that feels legitimate like as soon as there's any artifice as soon as there's any artificial nature to any of it that it seems like something that could easily be staged or it seems like somebody's acting instead of actually scared the second that it seems like something is too convenient or there's a monster that leaps out uh as soon as that happens the movie takes a dive and so when judging the paranormal activity the reason i say it's most effective is because it more than any other movie since the blair witch plays it straight plays it authentic and doesn't try to and avoids the pitfalls of seeming too cinematic seeming too artificial and that is pretty much the entire review you know, I, it's not perfect. I'm not claiming that it's any kind of masterpiece. Uh, what I'm saying is, it is the best example of the genre. And if that genre doesn't interest you in any way, you're not gonna like it. You know, that's that's the sort of that's that's pretty much the review. Now, here's where I get into spoilers, and really, really unforgivable spoilers. So if you have any interest in the movie, I've given my seal of approval to it. Go see it. You'll like it. I promise you. Now, the reason I didn't like this movie as much as the first one is because there is a lot more of that artifice. Uh, there are things that occur in this movie that are necessary in terms of plot development, but when they happen, it seems like it's scripted. Uh, okay. Where I really liked Paranormal Activity 1 was the fact that we didn't know what was happening. You know, uh, there, there was this fucked up thing haunting the house. It was tormenting these people. And it basically possessed and caused Katie, the, the woman, to commit these horrible atrocities against her husband? I think husband. If not live-in boyfriend. But So, and you didn't know why. Because by its very nature, this thing was unknowable. It was a demon. It was evil. And for all we knew, it had been haunting this family from the beginning just because it was fucked up. You know, it really was, it was just, it was a fucking demon. You know, it was like, that's what it does. And so, you know, we, at, at the, as, when the credits rolled for Paranormal Activity, when that was over, you're like, my God, I have no idea why this thing was, but, you were like, that was fucked up. You know, that was fucking scary. And, you know, it, like, the way the movie was presented, it goes, here's this footage. We don't know. Watch, you watch this shit. Like, that's pretty, that's, it might have just had a little text. Like, you watch this shit. We don't know what the fuck happened here. Maybe you can figure it out. We don't. And so, that was, that was the movie. And so, in this one, they actually do explain, or at least they hypothesize as to why uh katie and by connection uh the related family i believe it's her, her sister I, I think it's her, I, I you know actually i should have probably paid more attention to that score but uh it, it really is uh katie's sister and their family starts to experience the same fucked up shit and they at some point they start to explain why or they start to guess why and um, that's when it seems probably at its most artificial. You, you kind of start twiddling your thumbs and going, really? All right. Um, at the same time, they do it well. They do it well. And actually, I was kind of impressed with, with how well they managed to tie together these, uh, these stories. Uh, I, thought it, I was actually impressed with it. Um, and I say that like it's a good thing and a bad thing because... Um, You'll have to excuse me because I'm trying to explain. I'm trying to understand it myself. Uh, from a found footage point of view, it seems artificial. But in terms of creating the mythology of the story, in terms of telling a story, it works. It really does. 
and they explain it by saying, well, there's a reason that this demon is, has been haunting this family, and in particular, uh, this new family, you know, the, the sister. And it seems to take a real interest in their child, their, their baby named Hunter. And uh, they have to explain, well, um, the, the, the teenage daughter starts to actually put it together. And, of course, goes to this website that knows everything about demon possession or demon haunting and starts to guess that it's because at some point someone in the family made a bargain with otherworldly forces and the, uh, the subject of that bargain was the firstborn male child. And uh, that's about as much as I'll say to it, but uh, the fact that they were able, like, the teenage daughter in particular starts to almost immediately put this together where it's like weird shit starts happening in the house and she just Googles it. And she's looking at the computer going, oh my God, read this paragraph, read it. And they go, they're like, oh, a demon with an under underworldly pact, Satan worshipers, bargains for wealth and power, firstborn male heir. And she's like, you think that's what's happening? And, the, and her boyfriend's like, I don't know, could be. And she's like, that's what's happening. And I'm like, no, come on. You wouldn't have figured this shit out. I wouldn't have. And so, like, that's what I mean is the way, in terms of storyline structure, it works. It's an explanation, and it's a good one. Um, in terms of found footage, hmm, I don't know. Um, there's other stuff that goes on that is overly artificial, and um, it's actually where it's it's pretty much the exact same stuff that people cited when they said that oh, Paranormal Activity 1 was so good up until the ending. An ending I really liked, by the way, but at the same time admit that it's cinematic. And if you don't know what I mean, I mean the uh, everything is really mysterious, it's all really authentic, and then all of a sudden Mika gets fucking hurled across the room ass first into the camera, and then Katie... Uh, demon faces like ah! like does that thing where she she freaks out into the camera and her face all kind of distorts into demon and you're like okay thanks Nightmare on Elm Street thank you Freddy Krueger way to ruin the goodwill you built up to that one but I liked it because I felt it kind of the movie kind of earned that moment you know it, it through all this shit we we're like well we're gonna see we're, we are not seeing shit we're not seeing nothing that was your money shot you know, that was it. That was, you're like, oh my god, you got me. Okay, that was, she's a fucking demon. Okay. Um, the third act is pretty much all that. Uh, where this actually takes place, I think, over the course of like, Jesus. Uh, well, the, the main haunting takes place over the course of about a month. It's, it's a long time. These guys put up with this shit for a while. Uh, and so, when things finally start getting weird... Um, the guy is very skeptical, as anyone would be. You know, all this like this kind of kind of nuisance things start happening, and a lot of it is uh, some. Like I said, some of it works, some of it doesn't. Where like the pool filter keeps the the, the pool vacuum, whatever it is, a little robot that keeps running around the bottom of the pool. For some reason, it keeps ending up on the patio when uh, every morning, and they're like, "That's what the fuck is that happening?" And so, um, at some point. The house gets ransacked early on, actually. To, and to, like, like I said, this this is actually very effective because at some point they have to explain why they have cameras all over the fucking house. And it's because basically their house gets immediately at the beginning of the movie torn to shreds. Like, like a, a gang went through that place and just fucking destroyed everything. Like flipped the furniture, tore the fucking paintings off the wall, smashed the TV, like ripped everything up. And so they're like, fuck. Man, we gotta install some fucking cameras in this play. That's fucked up. And so they do. And so I actually liked the way that, like, every night, and there's a lot more of the nighttime footage because there's probably a lot more to cover. Where, and I, I liked how they did this. They kind of had a routine to where they start off with a with a shot of the outside looking at the pool. Then they start with a shot of the outside looking at the front door to kind of establish that nobody's getting in. And then they go to, it usually cuts to either the kitchen or the uh, the baby's room. And they kind of have this routine, and I'm like, I kind of like that. It's, it, it lends credence to the found footage type thing, where they kind of go, okay, here's the first thing, here's the second thing, and here's where the weird stuff happens. 
And so I, I thought that was cool. Um, I'm trying to... Um, I won't ruin the scares for you, but, you know, it, it, they're good. And where it gets weird is... Um, I really... This is where it really started getting good, honestly, was because one of the best actors in this movie is the dog. And that's not a slam on the other actors in this movie. The dog is awesome in this flick. I have no idea how they managed to turn performances from this dog to where, like, they're doing weird shit around this dog and it's, like, reacting. You know, in, in you the way you'd think a dog would. Like, it's, it's not looking at a trainer. It's not looking at the cameras. It's like a door starts blowing open. The dog starts like, what the fuck is that? And, like, the, the door keeps swinging open and the dog starts, like, getting its hackles up and, like, backing away, like, and, like, back. And also in the door signs, the dog's like, Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! And starts, like, running out the door and barking and starting to, like, wake everyone up. It runs to the other rooms and, like, it's like, wake up, there's fucking weird shit going on in here! And, like, the dog's running downstairs and, and it, like, it's, it's, it hears a noise downstairs and, the, it, or, like, another night, it hears a noise downstairs and the dog's like, what the fuck was that? And, it, like, you hear, you kind of hear it perk its ears up and it listens and it's like, what the fuck was that? And it cuts to a camera, and the dog's kind of creeping down the stairs, looking around. And, like, the TV comes on, the dog's like, oh, shit, the fuck was that? And, like, I'm kind of, pro- like, I'm projecting my own thoughts on this dog, but that's how much the dog was emoting. It was awesome. And so, at some point, the you actually really grow to like this dog, because it's, like, protecting the child. You know, it's, it, like, it, they, they... They put the dog in the room because they're like, nothing's getting in here. This fucking dog's going to deal with it. And this is big. It's like a German Shepherd, you know. So the dog is, like, looking out for this kid. And you really grow to like this thing. It's, the dog's name is Abby. And so there's a there's a point in this movie where the dog actually does battle with whatever it is that's haunting this house. I'm serious. And it's really good. Um, like, you hear it barking and it follows whatever it is. Like, the basement door, like, fucking blows open, and the dog's like, Jesus Christ! And so, it follows it, and you hear it, like, wrestling with something, or fighting, or, like, scared shitless, really. And then, all of a sudden, the dog, like, gets fucking, like, picked up and hurled across the room, and, like, thrown off camera, and you hear it go, like, Aah! And you're like, Oh, no! The dog! They get, it fucking killed the dog! Ah! And right there, that movie owns you. Like, that was good. The fact, like, I, I... They work with children and animals in this movie. They have the best dog ever. And then they hurt the dog. And you're like... From that moment on, you're like, Fuck this demon! I hope they fucking kill it! Because I love that dog. <laughs> I really do. I want a dog just like that. Well, not not dead, but, you know, a nice, protective, really smart dog that has a really emotive face, you know? It's a great dog. Um, the dog, well, I won't spoil what happens to the dog. It doesn't... The dog is injured, let's say, and they're, 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 they... The family is woken up by the sounds of the dog wrestling with the fucking demon. And they wake up and they're like, oh my god, Abby! And they have to take Abby to the vet, you know, like, because it's, Abby's fucking hurt. And you're like, uh, what's your name is on the phone and checking on the dog. And I'm like, is the dog okay? <laughs> I'm such a wuss. <laughs> oh. But yeah, that was, it was good. You know, that when it builds scares like that, and it hurts someone that you actually kind of really like. And it's amazing that the, the movie was crafted so well that you grew to care about this dog. Probably more than any of the other characters. You know, it was that was well played. And that actually took some doing. But okay. Um, like I said, the third act is where I kind of felt that it got fakey. And by that I mean at some point it had to escalate. You know, of course it of course it escalated after the dog. Because they look at the footage and something fucking fights this dog. And it hurts it. And they're like, I, what the fuck? What, look, this is real now. You know, this is fucked up shit. And so they start to get scared. And um, 
things start happening during the day. You know, people start getting locked out of the house and the doors are blowing shut. They know something's up. And so at, this is where I really hated it. Um, at the beginning of the movie, they have a housekeeper. And I forget her name. She's like a Hispanic uh, Latina housekeeper who, of course, barely speaks any English. And uh, she knows something's up right away. Like, not e shit even hasn't even started to happen yet. Like, the pool light goes out. Or, like, a pan falls off the fucking hanging rack. And you knew that... Like, you knew when you see the kitchen and you see that rack of hanging pans. You knew that was gonna, like, be the centerpiece of that movie. Like, that's... I would never have a rack of hanging pans. I don't even believe in ghosts. And I wouldn't have a rack of hanging pans. Because I know, like, it's... You're going to walk by and all of them, and their fucking pans are out like, I don't know why. After, like, the fucking pan falls off the hook, like, three times. And then, like, all hell starts to break loose. And, like, just the pans start to fucking rattle and blow off the wall. Dude, after the first time those fucking pans fall off the hook, I'm taking them down. Fuck that shit. Like, I know other stuff's going to happen, but it's not going to be the pans. I'm not going to have the fucking ghost throwing the fucking skillet at me no so okay so man fuck the pants um the the housekeeper starts to know something's up like right away and so as soon as the shit starts to go down you see her kind of listening to stuff and she's like she starts to cross herself and she starts to like like pray over stuff in the mantle and then when stuff starts getting really bad, like when it's when like she's the only one awake at night, and she sees something like creeping out the window, she like looks out the window. There's something there, you know. And uh, you like like a window will blow open, and she's like, "What the fuck?" Immediately, she uh, she knows what to do. She like of course she does because Hispanic people are very religious, you know. They're, they're tuned in spiritually. They're way more spiritually tuned in than us white people. And so when the when the demon starts to rear his ugly head, she starts whipping out incense and she starts burning shit and she starts, like, doing the voodoo thing. I, I, I hesitate to call it, like, any kind of Catholic thing because, like, she's... But she's burning candles. She's, she's, like, shaking chickens and she's, like, going up to the windows and, like, spitting on the windows and, like, praying. She's like, oh, sweet Jesus, protect us from the demons. And... Like, the family comes home, and she's, like, fucking waving incense around. And they're like, the fuck are you doing? And she's like, there's a demon in this. And she's like, she's, and she's like, she's like, Señor, el diablo es, es aquí. And, and, and they're like, uh-huh. And she's like, no, señor. Esta diablo. Or, like, 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 yo tengo el diablo aquí. And, and she's like... Uh-huh, yo, Kiro Taco Bell, take your fucking Diablo out the fucking window. And, like, and she's like, go get us some fucking tacos, Lupita. And they kick her out. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, they, they really are, like, the, that dismissive of her. Because, of course, in movies like this, there's always a wise Latino woman or someone who's, like, like in, in Shyamalan's Devil, where there's that wise Hispanic security guard who's like, I know what this is. My grandmother, she told me. She told me a legend about El Diablo. And El Diablo would haunt you in elevators and choose those who are willing to go to hell. Like, that must be the, like, the, the housekeeper must be the same lady who told the guy from Devil about the devil because she knows everything. And so, early on in the movie, like, she's fucking setting the house on fire, waving the incense around, and they fire her because she's fucking crazy, right? And so... At some point, like, the the wife gets, like, fucking dragged down the stairs. Like, fucking Ghostbusters, you know? Like, she's she's picking up the baby and, like, weird stuff's about to happen. She's freaked out. And then all of a sudden, like, in the first paranormal activity, like, something, like, just fucking grabs her by the ankle and starts to drag her through the house. And, like, slamming her against walls. And she's hanging on to the fucking stairway going, ah! And it's like, it's like pulling and pulling and she gets away and all of a sudden it grabs her by the throat. She's like, Aah! and it pulls her into the basement and see, she, she starts acting weird. Like Katie did at the end of the first movie. And so the guy sees that she's acting weird and watches the tape and sees like that. This is a fucking demon, you know, like there's no, 
the other stuff was like, oh, the door blew shut. Ooh, scary. That must the wind, you know. And so the the pool thing gets out. It's like oh, the pool thing gets out all the time. Who cares? Uh, but after the dog and after she see after he sees the lady getting pulled all over, it's like this is fucked up. And so he start he's he gets on the phone. He's he's whipping through his Rolodex. He's going through and he's like and the, the daughter's like, what are you doing? And she's like. I need to call Lupita. She tried to warn me this would happen. And of course, like, he, he dials her up and she comes right down with her with her demon busting kit. You know, she has like this crate. You know, she has like a toolbox. You know, uh, she opens it up and she gets this big fucking like rosewood cross and she starts dumping olive oil all over it. And she's like, she's like, this will repel the demon. And he's like, really? And she's like, yeah. And so, she's, but she knows how to do this. Like, if, if you're ever in trouble, if there's a ghost in your house, just ask your Latina housekeeper. Because Hispanic people know about this shit. Know more about this shit, by the way, than the professional demonologist who they consult in the first meeting. No, 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 fuck that. Uh, age uh, Hispanic housekeeper. That'll bust your ghost right there. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, that part to me was... I knew right away. Honestly, I knew as soon as we saw her, like, kind of cooking stuff in the kitchen. And all of a sudden, they kind of cut to the camera. And she's, like, caught her head cocked to one side. And I'm like, oh, we're not really doing this, are we? We're not going the... We're, we're not doing the wise Yoda-like shamanistic Latina lady, are we? And yeah, we are. Uh, and so... But at the same time, it's 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 well done. And so there, there comes a point where the guy basically does unholy battle with his own wife who is now possessed by the demon and uh i really wish they hadn't done this by the way um the last act of the movie he starts to he she starts to freak out she's basically possessed by the demon you know she's she's gonna claim this kid's soul and so she she's basically like all demon faced and she's like running around and fucking strangling people and biting them and stuff like that and so she runs into the basement of course there's a scene where the power goes out, and that was good. I like actually when the power went out, but of course, we had to have a scene with a night vision camera going down the stairs into the basement, just like all these movies end, and I, I, I have expected them to like get to the foot of the stairs, and turn around, and there's Josh standing in the corner, and then the camera drops. And sure enough, that's pretty much what happens. Like He, he goes to the bottom of the stairs, he turns around, and there's the kid staring at him like an alien. And then he's like, oh, fuck! And he falls over, and the camera's, like, laying there. And I'm like, oh, come on! Um, and again, even though I was kind of frustrated with it, and even though it was very cinematic in style, I kind of liked it. You know, I, and th th this is the exact same thing I think a lot of people are going to point to and just go, Pfft. This movie was balls. Um, again, I think it's... This is entirely a measure of how much under its spell you're willing to go. You know, how much into this shit you're willing to buy. Because, again... I keep saying again. Um, I think at some level it earns that. You know, it it starts off pretty straight, straight up. You know, straight laced. Um, to where it really does ramp the tension and the dread up until it reaches basically a boil and then it boils for so long and then boom, and then it just erupts like like all hell literally breaks loose you know uh this fucked up shit goes on in that house man and um if honestly my biggest complaint is not that it's cinematic you know in terms of artifice uh i think it actually moves too fast uh in the sense that when when she gets bitten by the demon and kind of possessed and she's freaking out just like Katie did. There's a moment. Uh, it moves too fast. Uh, basically, it goes right from that to the fact that he's he's wrestling her in like Mortal Kombat. You know, uh, he's trying to like exorcise her. I I really think we could have maybe spent 10, 15 minutes really stewing on that, where she's acting weird. She's acting all not demonic, but unearthly like distant where she like she's staring straight ahead and she's kind of freaking people out and they do that for like a minute where the daughter she's the only one home and she starts to see like 
the 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 mother is is kind of like staring out windows or like spread like kind of spread out in a chair just kind of like staring straight ahead going oh. like and i was like that was really good because you don't know what the fuck she's capable of at this point you know and then they just go right from that to where the the husband comes home and they're like uh, we got to call the housekeeper and then they get a cross ready and then shit comes out you know like i really thought we you could have really gone on a lot longer and really milked some genuine suspense out of that scene. I, that, that was my only complaint was it, it really did go too fast where we went from, Oh, she's possessed, but is she, what, what's going on with her to all oh, right, hell, you know? Uh, and I, I really think uh, when the DVD comes out, I think that'll be the first thing that is kind of reintroduced if they ever include new footage in where I, I, I really think they cut it for time or some kind of, theatrical convenience you know what i'm saying uh yeah if you see it you'll see what i mean and i'm i i am entirely sure that people are going to really disagree with me on this one and uh i think people are really going to hate this movie i really I, I think people i think even fans of the first one might easily walk out of this one saying like that was too much you know it was uh they went too far with this one um it's hard to say whether or not it, it I'm glad they kind of ramped it up because if they made it just the same, I would have been like, even, even now I just described it as the same shit, different day, but it does ramp up. You know, it does, it does give you answers. It does really escalate the scope and the, the violence of what this thing is capable of. And it, it, I think it really does pose, some uh, new scares, but it does recycle some old scares, which I don't think really work. For instance, uh, there's a scene where in the first one where she's, she's like, she shrieks and it's just a spider in the bathroom. Of course, there's a scene in this one where the daughter shrieks and it's somebody left a floater in the toilet. You're like, all right, whatever. Uh, what was the other one? They, they really do blatantly recycle another one. Um, Oh, now I can't remember what it was. But they, they, they repeat another scare, which I thought was kind of hammy. Um, fuck, what was it? I don't know. But I think, by and large, it was it was a lesser movie, but I still think it was... If you liked the first one, you liked this one. Um, oh, what was I going to say? Damn it. Oh, I know. I know what it was. <laughs> another real problem I had was the... Uh, the ending, but for not the reasons you'd think. Um, it turns out, ultimate spoiler here, by the way, it turns out this movie is actually a prequel. Where they are the family that is haunted first. And they, uh, they actually survive it. Where when the husband basically fights the demon... And he actually manages to defeat, to defeat the demon with his olive oil-soaked cross. I don't know how that works. But he does it. And so there's a scene right before that where he's like, I gotta do this. I gotta fight this thing. And she's like, but you don't even know if it's gonna work. And she's like, but but I, I, this is where I kind of lost it too, by the way. I, I, I kind of lost the thread of the narrative because they were all yelling over each other. I'm not sure I fully understood it. But he goes like, but he's like, um... If we drive it out, it'll go somewhere else. And I'm not going to have this happen to my family. Like, we have to get it. Like, if, if I drive it out of her, it'll never come back. But it'll go somewhere else. But that's not my problem. And I'm like, what, what, huh? And so he drives the demon out. And he lays her to bed. And then he, like, there's an, he has an argument with the daughter. He's like, she's like, we have to tell somebody. We have to show people this. And he's like, no, no. We're not going to tell nobody nothing. I mean nothing. We're never going to talk about this shit again. And I mean, like, never! And he'll be like, if, if what Rosalita says is true, when we drive this demon out, she's not going to remember anything that happened. And we're not going to tell her. Because she can't know this. Nobody can know this. And she just goes, yeah, you're right. Okay. No, fuck you. Fuck you. No. If that shit was happening in my house, I'd fucking tell everybody. I'd have this on fucking YouTube. Man, I'd fucking, I'd make a movie. You know? Like, but the daughter's like, oh, you're right. We can't tell nobody about this. Fuck you, man. I'm telling everybody. Fuck that, man. I'd be on fucking 60 Minutes with that shit. 
oh man <laughs> they're like no we can't. so of course they they don't tell anybody and then uh katie from the first movie is like so is everything okay with you guys like nothing weird's happening anymore and the and of course the sister doesn't remember so she's like no nothing nothing man. it's nothing and like of course the husband don't say shit even though he really should like hey um hey mika <laughs> mika i know like you're gonna think i'm crazy mika but in the events that your uh your wife becomes a demon take a wooden cross and soak it in olive oil and then shove it up her ass and that'll get the demon out and he'll mika would be like what and the guy should just be like just i know it, it's a joke i know but just remember i said that bye just like he could have brought that shit up like at any time you know <laughs> if, if i would if i went up to you and was like okay um if i was if i just made a video where i was like okay guys um i'm not something weird happened to me last night and uh if i told you your dog started talking to you to throw a lemon at it just do it you'd be like the fuck is spoonie talking about this is a joke I'd be like, yeah, it's a joke. It's a, but seriously, do it. And I left. You'd be like, that was weird. Huh. I think Spoonie's losing his mind. And then that'd be the last you'd think of it. But as soon as your dog started talking to you, you'd be like, I better throw a lemon at this fucking dog. <laughs> you, you just, you really would. So, like, I just found it funny. Like, Mika, poor bastard. Poor Mika. Like, his, his wife starts freaking out. He don't know why. Like, it's because, of course, the fucking idiot didn't see fit to say nothing <laughs> so at the end katie shows up and by the way the trailers really spoil the shit out of that uh katie shows up and basically does the steven seagal neck snap on the husband and um does a mafia punch in the stomach with the fury of a thousand hellfires and uh basically reenacts the ass into the camera and that was it so canonically the uh the jump scare ending was the uh, canonical one and not the throat slashing ending, which a lot of people prefer. Honestly, the uh, there were three endings: was the uh, the the jump scare, the throat slash, and the police ending. I, actually, I think a lot of people prefer the police ending and the throat slash. They are like anything but the jump scare one. But yeah, the jump scare one is canonical. It had to be, had to be, because that was the theatrical version. There's no way they could be like, oh yeah, that um, she's alive, because the ending we showed in the theaters was bullshit. Yeah, I'm um, sorry about that. Um, anyway, I've got to talk about impact now. So, until next time, I've, I have no idea how long I've rambled on. At least 45 minutes. Um, anyway, yeah, check it out. Happy Halloween, guys.